Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome back to the podcast. I am uh, about to uh, come in with a lot of fire and a lot of passion on this podcast because it, it hits my heart um, early in the morning uh, today. It's a, a story uh, about uh, an intern who came in uh, today and um, came in so excited about uh, finally getting accepted into a PT school. And I'm so proud of Kenshin. Uh, this is uh, an intern of ours who has been with us for a couple years and um, just hits me in the heart to know that he has had some success. And And I um, got a little frustrated with him and, and uh, I wasn't uh, overly excited for him. And, and the reason behind that is the reason why we're doing this podcast. It's the three barriers um, to success that you didn't even realize existed. And um, as, a, as a package, as a whole, um, you know that inherently that there's going to be some barriers to like what you're trying to accomplish in, in either, uh, you know, you're a new grad or you're in PT school or you're out, uh, you've been PT, practicing PT for eight to 10 years and you're trying to look for that next thing or you're looking for that uh, next job or you want to go into pro sports, whatever that is. And uh, I, I got frustrated with Kenshin and I said, um, why am I disappointed in you right now? And uh, he, I don't think he was too surprised. <laughs> he said, uh, because I didn't, I didn't think it was possible. And I said, exactly. And, um, you know, I said, I'm, I'm very, very proud of you. And that makes me um, very emotional because it, it's my passion. It is my thing at the moment. It's my why um, to help people advance professionally and behind the scenes personally and that's why this podcast episode um, exists today so let me tell you um, a little bit more about uh, Kenshin and and how this um, applies to your practice Uh, Kenshin originally came in asking about you know what do I need to do to make myself more competitive for PT school and uh, you know with uh, a GPA that's this number and um, a GRE that's this number, the easiest leftover piece has to be your story. Your story is the like the deal breaker. I want to know why you want this job. I want to know why you you deserve to get into PT school over 10,000 other applicants. And it's the, the reason that people get accepted. Uh, I used to help with admission committees and, and I understand what goes on behind the scenes. You have numerical value and then you have the intangible qualities of a human. And you have to find that balance. And so for you guys, this this is, uh, I have three barriers. And the first one that uh, Kenshin and I uh, sat down and did was a plan. You know, what do we need to do to map out your equation if we know your GRE is here and we know that your GPA is here your letter needs to be phenomenal not with a PH with an F like phenomenal and uh, this is the first start of this uh, uh, path to success you need to have a plan and I hear this all the time from new grads or established PTs, like I want to work in pro sports. I want to work with elite athletes. I want to work in a a very elite setting. Sounds good. That sounds like a dream. Um, But the difference between a dream and a path is action. You have to set that plan so you can have steps to achieve that. And if you don't have steps, it's a dream. And, And there is the difference. And so Kenshin and I uh, kind of mapped out what needs to be organized and um, outlined to exactly address uh, who he is and who, what he brings to this school. And um, the qualities were intangible. It, it, it was very much a big storytelling process. And, but for us, we needed an outline and know exactly where the ratio and the scenarios were um, to be able to set him up for success. So we set up a plan. Um, looked at all the scores, looked at all his application, and then we knew our eggs had to be in one basket. And that was going to be our um, essays and then putting the whole package together um, so people can understand his profile. So in your professional career, you've got to have a plan. Like, stop dreaming. Um, I see a lot of clinicians, you know, that are on YouTube, on Instagram, trying to look for that next thing like what new exercises what thing is going to set me apart and 
all you're doing is being entertained and dreaming all day long. And none of those are actionable things. Like set yourself up for success. You, you know, you can listen to podcasts all you want. But if you don't do anything with that new information, it's irrelevant to your ultimate goal. And what I mean by that is if you're not taking that up, that information and applying it that week, whether it's, you know, in your personal life, um, in the clinic, it's like taking a, a con ed course over the weekend and, and applying none of it. Like it was worthless. It was a waste of your time. So you got to have a plan. If you want to set yourself up for success, yes, you're going to take the right courses. Yes, you're listening to the right podcast, but it's got to be implemented. It's got to be done on your own. And the hardest part about this whole thing when you have a plan, how do you know you're going one direction or in the right direction? So number one, you have to have a plan. But behind that, number two, the most essential piece is you got to have mentorship or coaching or leadership, somebody telling you, you're going too far left. You're going too far right. I wouldn't add that in. I would change that. Uh, move your progression from week one to week six. Um, don't start plow metrics here. I would start them a little bit later. Don't flare up, um, you know, the patellar tendon. Uh, go less aggressive. And if you try and learn that off of podcasts or audio or whatever it is, some of that information might be already outdated. Or the problem is, is that you're not live in that scenario trying to put it all together and so you need somebody who's like right there with you on a regular basis giving you that feedback that's what coaching and leadership is is like weekly monthly like on a regular basis and when you're doing con ed like quarterly or like semi-annually that information has nothing to like you're it's lost a month later so if you're looking to set a plan and you're that that sounds great but what you don't know is how much you're veering or if you're in the right direction or is this too lofty of a goal? How do I break this down? And so number two is mentorship and, le and leadership or coaching. You have to have it. And if you don't have that on a regular basis, you're just going to go fishing for like larger and bigger dreams. And guess what? Like none of the smaller scale actionable items get done. And so what happens is people start building all these big dreams of um, accomplishing something, whether that's, uh, uh, you know, being an SCS or an OCS, uh, a specialist in something. Uh, but nothing gets done until you actually sit down week by week and map this out. Realistically, how long is this going to take me to prepare for this exam? Uh, I want to get this uh, internship at this very elite uh, facility. Uh, but how do you know if your application is going to be strong? It's like doing things all over again. And if you like you, you did in PT school or maybe you're in PT school, and now you're trying to get that job and you got to create the best resume, set yourself for, for success. I often get the question, uh, how do I get the get into the best PT school? Uh, you you got to start from like your freshman year and start like observing and getting organized early on. If you wait to that last year, it looks it, it's very obvious on a resume. And so when people come out of PT school and they're applying for a job, we do re hiring regularly. I can see when somebody was lazy throughout the first two years of PT school, cruise control, and they're like, oh my goodness, I really actually want to get a job at a good, great facility. And then they, that last year, they start doing, uh, cramming it all in. And what happens is they got lost. They didn't have anybody there to support them and say, hey, like I'd push you here, go this direction, go that way. So yes, you can have a plan, but then number two, you have to have the mentorship and leadership or coaching from somebody that can be your parents it can be the PT that you observed uh, behind the scenes getting into PT school the people who wrote your letter recommendation and the way I see mentorship and leadership and coaching is are the people that you're looking up to in the position that you want to be so I have a lot of people who throw information at me um, at uh, you know, uh, team members here at Sports Formants or people in your life that you hear them talking to you. And you have to ask, okay, are you in a position where I want to be? Because then if you're not, that specific information might not be relevant. So um, uh, most recent thing that we've been doing uh, personally is that we've been looking at like our general finances and like what we want to do and, and um, you know, what do we want to save and these type of things. And a lot of people will give me information, but then I'm like, okay, wait a minute. The people giving me information, are they in the position that I want to be in? And so if they're not, their advice about finances 
make no sense to me. So the same thing goes with PT school or whatever it is you're trying to do. Whoever you're getting advice from, make sure that they're in the same position you want to be. So if somebody is not an OCS, not an SCS, has never done a residency, has never worked in pro sports, has never worked in uh, in a leadership capacity or mentorship capacity, and they just happen to be the PT that they were you were meant you were mentored by. You got to ask: Does their advice ever fade out and become obsolete about your next progression? Of course it does, because it's on to the next level. Some people in your life help you get to a certain point, and then. They'll continue to give you advice, but the problem is, is that they can't help you to that next level. And so all you're trying to do is ascend this ladder of leadership, of um, getting higher level degrees, uh, getting higher level specialties, getting to that next step, getting into residency or whatever it is, your dream job. That ascending ladder comes from having people who just create a new rung for you. They just create that new one for me. And uh, gosh, I have so many of those people who've helped me. And uh, there's other people who are going to be throughout that whole ladder and some that will just create every single step. And you always have to be grateful for those people. But internally, you have to understand now you got to seek out more different leadership or mentorship or coaching. So uh, number one is create the plan. Number two, you've got to have mentorship, leadership or coaching. They're the same thing or within the same family. And then number three, um, that third barrier. So the first one was a lack of a plan. Number two is lack of mentorship or leadership or coaching. And then number three is a result. If you have a plan, if you have mentorship, it creates the single most important thing that is a result of everything, which is the confidence. And you can't have confidence if you don't have a plan or mentorship or leadership. So after having a discussion with Kenshin, we created a plan. Uh, we outlined exactly what we needed. I was just there to help provide bumpers, like, hey, I wouldn't do this, move this, you know, change this, uh, apply here, uh, maybe this school, whatever it is. And ultimately, when we created that, I remember working through some of it. He's like, man, that was easy. Or that was pretty basic. It's pretty simple. Absolutely, when you know what you're looking at. The problem is if you try and go into this world of you know sports PT without any like support, it's overwhelming. It's daunting. I get it. I've been very fortunate to find leaders or mentors who I don't know if they found me. I found them. I was just putting myself in positions where. I just needed to be in that and they naturally gravitated towards my personality or I actually found them and I was like, I don't care. I want you as my mentor, you know, I just keep bugging them, right? Like I, I have that passion and it's hard to say no to passion and like people who have passion, you're drawn to it naturally. So you got to have the plan. You got to have the mentorship. Once you have that confidence is automatic. It is, it comes with the territory because you feel like you're in the right direction and you know, you're on that track. And the minute that you are established or whatever it is and you think that you no longer need a plan or you need a, no longer need mentorship you've outgrown yourself you you are in a position where you are no longer growing um myself i still have mentors i still have coaches i know where my next level is currently i'm on this next track in my life to help people like kenshin like yourself all your listeners to put you in a position where like this is where you're going to go next. How do I get you to that point? How do you, if you want that dream job, I'll help you get there. I get it, but you have to put yourself in that position. And I can't make those moves for you. I can just tell you, go left, go right, change this, move that. And uh, ultimately, that's what puts you in a position of success. And uh, I, I had to share this story because I'm so proud of this human being. And uh, it's the reason why I am onto this next project in my life. And if you've heard other podcasts or heard me in other stories or other platforms, um, this is my why. This is why I enjoy and absolutely love what I do. It's helping you guys get to that next level. I hope that there's people on this who bypass me at a younger age uh, with more success um, because that's like, you're just creating rungs for people. Just get people on a ladder to success but you got to have the will, you got to have the passion, 
And once you have that passion, that's the foundation. Put a plan in place. You got a mentorship. Guess what? You're, you're floating in the clouds. You think you have all the confidence in the world. Don't steer off of that. Stay with the same stuff. You always have to have a plan. You got to have mentorship. And that creates that confidence. The minute that you digress from that and you actually jump off and you think you can do it on your own, uh, you get stagnant. Um, because you trust that yourself, like you are going to do this. And reality is, man, it, it's it's hard to do it on your own. I, I promise you. You can read all the research articles. You can listen to all the podcasts. If you do that, you're relying on yourself to do it. And guess what? You have no checks and balances, right? That That's the reason why. Do you think that Tom Brady at the age of, I don't know, 42, 43, doesn't still make, doesn't have a coach, doesn't have a technical coach to say, Hey, on that throw, put a little less spin, watch your back foot, fine tune this, look at your arm, you know, look at that receiver, change this. Of course he does. He always needs that because he, all he's doing, the difference is early on in your career, you're fine tuning 80% because you only have 20% of the framework. And at Tom Brady's, you know, point in his career, what he's doing is now he's only doing like 1% changes because everything is automated. Now he just needs those 1% changes because at his level, that's the difference between success and another Super Bowl or getting sacked 27 times. So in your career, where are you? Do you need the 80% of you know support, mentorship, leadership, and coaching? Or are you that far out, eight, 10 years out, where you need just a little bit of the fine tuning? Either way, you still need support. Now, if Tom Brady didn't have any support whatsoever, I'm sure he would do well, but he's also going to make those critical mistakes that he wasn't looking out for, but they were looking at him. He could only see it so far when you're on the field. When you have people who are in the stands and coaches in the coach's box above the stadium looking down, their view is very different. And when you're in your world and you have zero plan, your lens looks so small and you're so narrow and you're so scared. But when you have people support you and mentors and leaders, they can see it from the top of the stadium. They can see it and you're like, no, you're on the right path. Change this. I would get more observation hours here. I would get an SCS here. I get your CSCS. I would move this. Wait one more year and then grab a little bit more, you know, technical work here. I'd start working on your manual therapy. I would now let's get an athletic trainer to help support you with taping, all these other things. I think you need to work on strength coaches now. I, I think you need to get your SCS or CSCS. I mean, all these things are little, little tweaks that you're making your professional career. That's not just a general portfolio, but you're narrowing down where your journey is going to be next. So um, there you have it. uh, Three barriers to your success that you didn't even realize existed. And this is very important. Um, You might be uh, in PT school. Sorry, you might be a PT student. You might be in PT school. uh, You might be a new grad. You might be 10 years out. It doesn't matter. All the same things exist. And uh, if this doesn't resonate with you, uh, you, you're probably, um, some of your techniques are outdated and uh, you're complacent, but most of the listeners on this um, are really trying to make a difference in their life, and they're motivated, and they're passionate, they got the will, they, they know it, they just need a plan and an outline and mentors and leaders to be able to get um, onto that next level. So uh, be like Kenshin, you know, don't, uh, you know, grab, grab some confidence, uh, make sure that you are um, moving yourself forward, and uh, stop doubting yourself. It's natural, I get that, like, At this point in my career, I'm not doubting myself because I know my plan and I have mentors and leaders to help push me in the right direction. So because of that, I feel like I'm floating. We're on this next level and uh, I want you to be able to feel that as well. So uh, don't steer away. You got to believe in yourself. This is is something serious in your professional growth and I wish you nothing but the best uh, as I continue to produce these these, uh, podcasts and and really I, I hope they resonate with you because it no matter what stage in your career, I don't even care how long you're practicing or if you're just an undergrad student, good for you. If you're listening to this now, man, you guys are, you, you, you're 10 million, mile, 10 million miles ahead of me. And uh, this is the stuff that will set you up for success. So uh, if you're interested in, in any of this content and, um, and uh, you want to uh, learn more, wh- one of the things that I'm focusing on um, down the line, and this is way ahead of of launch is really getting people who are interested in this and like-minded together to make sure that um, 
we keep people accountable. If you're looking for support, mentorship, leadership, um, that is where we're moving next. So if you're moving towards that and you want to be part of this academy, um, I'm looking to get people with that same strong will who are looking for a plan, who just need help fine tuning it, um, who need a little bit of support on the mentorship or leadership side. Um, that's what I'm trying to do is give you more of that confidence and uh, make sure that you're on the right path to whatever you're aspiring to do. So if you're interested, uh, let me know, uh, Dr. Chris at uh, drchrisgarcia.com. Uh, otherwise, I will see you guys on the next episode. Uh, take care, guys.